can't wait to jump into this book, Flights of Fancy, because first of all, I have two young boys, they're five and six years old, and the illustrations are incredible on this book. It's something I know they're gonna, their eyes are gonna go right to, and they're gonna start asking me all these questions about some of these animals that glide, and some that fly, and some insects, and so, you know, I know you have another book where you had, you know, illustrations, and it was also for a younger audience, but was this something that you wanted to do, or write a book for ages eight to 80 for some time? Yes, the earlier book you referred to is called The Magic of Reality. And uh, I, I, in, in, in that book, um, each chapter begins with, with a question, something like, what is an earthquake? Why do we have winter and summer? And uh, it, the chapter then begins with mythological answers to the question, myths from all over the world, and then it gives the scientific answer. And I thought I might do another volume of magic of reality and the first chapter I thought of was flight but then flight kind of grew into a whole book which it which became flights of fancy and I enjoy learning up all aspects of a subject including the physics and the biology and the mythology actually and um, so yes that, that that's how it got started and you kind of open the book and talk about how as humans, we are fascinated by flight, and you go back to maybe the old drawings of Michelangelo, and I was telling you earlier, I used to fly helicopters, and I just remember being in the air in this device thinking, this is just magic, like I can't believe I'm up here. And what, what is this fascination? I think a helicopter must give you a wonderful feeling of freedom, because it does. you can land anywhere you like and take off again. And, yeah, and it's very unrestrictive. We can yes, hover and yes. fly with the doors mm. off. And so it's rather like a hover fly, which can, which can dodge around and st stand hovering still and then go backwards, upwards, forwards, downwards, even upside down actually, which I don't, wouldn't recommend in a helicopter. Um, y yes, um, I, I think everybody is, um, most people are fascinated by flight and many people share with Leonardo da Vinci the, the ambition to try to um, get up in the air and he, he designed many flying machines, none of which would have worked, but he obviously had this great ambition. There's a book, picture in the book of one of his drawings. I think it looks like a hang glider, maybe. It looks like maybe an early version. Some of his things look like hang gliders. He also had various flapping versions, what were called ornithopters, where the man in the, in the harness was supposed to flap his arms and, and obviously trying to mimic a bird. That turned out to be the wrong answer. You can't do it by mimicking a bird. Right. You have to start from scratch. Um, he also designed a kind of helicopter which was an Archimedes screw, a, 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 um, a, a screw that's put to screw itself into the air. Mm. And um, the motive power for that was four men with a capstan running round and round and round <laughs> in a sort of runway. And of course they couldn't, muscle power couldn't possibly generate enough right. power to, to, to lift themselves. Um, but it, also it had no um, stabilizing what, what on a modern propeller is provided by the rear pr propeller, otherwise it just spins round and round yeah. and round and that's all. Even if his machine had got off the ground, it would have just spun round and round and round. Yeah. Do you think if he had the materials and the electric motors in his lifetime, he might have been able to create something? Well, yes, if he'd, if he'd had enough, if, I mean, human muscle power is not, not enough. It, it, it depends upon a much greater source of power than that. Right. And in the book, you kind of go through the hot air balloon and <laughs> and then we kind of see the Wright brothers, and it's kind of fascinating to know that what, six decades later, now we're on the moon. I mean, it's, it's amazing. That's an astonishingly short time, actually, from the, from the Wright brothers to Neil Armstrong. Ridiculously short space of time. Yeah, yeah. I had my, my sons out, and we were watching the moon, and I was explaining the phases of the moon, and I said, I said, they put a man on the moon, and they both look at me like I'm crazy. Like, it's still almost inconceivable if you're a human on this planet to look up there and think, we put one of our people up there. It's a long time ago now. I mean, I it, 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 and it, it's, it's amazing that such a long time has elapsed since the, that time. Yeah, 60 plus years. I think they're going back is the latest. Yes, the, the, the mission was canceled a, a couple of days ago. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four week crypto boot camp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged, I was held accountable, and pushed to do things that 
honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator by far was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.